Yo, what's poppin' y'all? Uh, we're here with, we're, we're back with Dark Blood too. The uh, last episode, we completed um, Ocean Shore Cave. All we have left to do is the boss battle. So, uh, we should get right into it. Shigura Village. It sure looks like it. Which Shigura should we try and talk with? Who knows? Let's try them all one by one. Hey, old big man. What's good? Welcome to the Shigura Village. This place is where we allay our fatigue from our long journey. So please, do keep it down. We are a migrating race, and every year we make the long journey to come. That man looks different from the rest. He must be important. This is our village elder. Be on your best behavior, please. I knew Hey, yo, big man was good. I am Baru, the Shigura tribe elder. We hey, rarely good, see humans here. What is it you want? Well, actually, we have a favor to ask. A favor? What is it? There's an injured Shigura on the far shore. Human medicine isn't doing any good, so we need some Shigura medicine. A Shigura? Hmm. Then it must be one that got separated from my tribe. I think so. I must be getting old if I can't even keep my own tribe together. All right, take this then. Secret Dragon Rem. It should work on our lost Shigura's injuries. Care for him well. Thank you, Elder. Come on, let's hurry back to Powell's place. Sure thing. Oh. 
His wounds are healing. Shingala, you feeling better? Oh, I'm so glad. You're all better. <laughs> that tickles. Stop it. <laughs> really looks happy. Yeah. What's that? Don't tell me it's... It is. That we can miss. So, got to be sure to get it. We already got the scoop of the death arc. So, we're good on. Hey, what are the Shigura doing? Look! They've got the same devices on as Shingala did. They're being controlled. That Gaspard, he doesn't stop at anything. Hey, well, that baseline? Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like my new invention, the marionette? Now the Shigura are under my complete control. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. I forgot how fucking hard this boss battle music slaps. So you're the one that put that thing on Shingala. Huh? Oh, <coughs> you mean that Shigura calf? What the fuck is wrong with this talking about? Why, yes, that was my work as well. I had quite a lot of fun with that one. <laughs> you won't get away with this! Why, you little loudmouth! Just what do you plan to do, eh? I think I'll just have my Shigura toy with you for a while. How does that grab you? <laughs> straightforward. They lower their heads and you gotta wait until Dr. Jamming hovers over their head. You hit their head. They go back up and um causes damage to Dr. Jamming.
Why did it do it the first time? Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe it! You actually beat me! Yeah. Did it. Thank you for saving us. Who were those people? They're the Dark Forces sent by Emperor Griffin. Emperor Griffin? That's right. He and his henchmen are trying to undo history. I don't know what he's after exactly, but I do know that if we don't stop him, our world may be destroyed. I see. I had no idea. I truly must be getting old. I should have known what was going on in the world. My days as the elder of this tribe are coming to an end. Max! Monica! Hey, it's Pow! are the one who rescued our stray tribe member? Oh, no, it's nothing, really. So, it was you, was it? This child's mother was lost on this trip. Damn. Even for the Shigura, an expedition of this kind is never easy. It's a long journey. And we lose many along the way. Sadly, this child's mother was one of them. Damn. Ew. Here come the here come the tears, dog. With his mother gone, I am sure he thought of you as his own parent. Oh. I don't know how to thank you. This child will grow up to be a fine Shigura, thanks to your kindness. Aww, oh, stop it, Shingala. Our tribe must return south now. So this is goodbye. We must part for now. Thank you for all you have done. May you have good fortune in your travels. Farewell, all of you. Of Shingala. I know you'll grow up to be a great Shigura. Hey, it's hard for me to say goodbye too, you know? Go on, off you go.
<laughs> Damn. It's enough to make a grown man cry. <laughs> it's okay. Shingala, take care. So the sea dragon, Shingala, after seeing the kindness of humans, set out on his own journey across the wide seas. Every year from that day, Shingala continued to bring Luna Stones to this shore, and when he did, he always looked for Pau. Shingala never for a moment forgot the special days that he spent with Pau. And then, 20 years later, Thanks to the biggest load of Luna Stones ever, brought by the new Shigura elder, Shingala, the world's premier research center, the Lunatic Wisdom Laboratory was finally completed. It's enough to make a grown man cry, dog. All right. Check what our uh, percentage is at now. 100? Just like that? Let's go. You came at a good time. I've just finished my latest creation. Take a look. What's that? It's a Nova Cannon. It's a weapon that uses the sun's energy to generate a powerful beam. Attach this to your ride pod, and then you'll have nothing to fear. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dr. Osmond. No problem. <laughs> Okay, so we're in the red one right now. Let's start collecting the chests now. <gasps> Yo! Let's fucking go. Hold on, I'm, I need to reply to this man.
long. can make with all this. This is Lunatic Wisdom Laboratory, the greatest research facility in the world. This is the Central Lab, the biggest research room of them all. Hey, I bet they can make something to send us back 10,000 years here. <laughs> I bet you you're right.
cutscene time. Thanks to you, the lab's been completely restored to its former state. I really appreciate it. Now let me explain my plan for getting you to Griffin 10,000 years in the past. Really? Sure, there's nothing this Luna Lab can't do. Oh, wow! Ixion, a time-traveling locomotive. A fantastic non-stop express that can cross both time and space. When this is finished, you'll be able to travel 10,000 years into the past, where Griffin is. Amazing! How much longer will it take? Well, let's see. Let me check. Dr. Jamming! Jamming? What? Now hold on a minute. This is not the same jamming that attacked you back in the past, okay? Well, not exactly the same anyway. He happens to be his grandson. Dr. Jamming's grandson? I'm terribly sorry. It seems my grandfather caused you a lot of trouble. Please accept my apology. However, without my grandfather's research, I would have never been able to develop the Ixion. My grandfather was researching technology that would allow objects to float on the air using sound. He called this his aeroharmonics flying technology. However, he came to a dead end in his research and became desperate. That's when Gaspard persuaded my grandfather into becoming one of Griffin's servants. But when he lost that battle to you two, he had a change of heart. He rededicated himself to his research and was able to perfect his aeroharmonics technology. He perfected aeroharmonics? Many flying vehicles were developed after that based on his technology. Of course, the Ixion here takes advantage of the same technology, and by combining it with the space-time control panel I developed, my grandfather has passed away, but before he died, he told me I should use his research for something good and just. I try to carry on his wishes, and I think that by continuing his research, this world can truly be saved. Dr. Jamming, he was quite a guy. Yes, and you helped him become the man he was. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say... But that's strange. In the history I know, Aeroharmonics technology was never perfected. Our travels must be creating a new history for the world. Do you think that's okay? Well, I'm still getting the hang of this, but I'm thinking that maybe history as you know it is not necessarily the one true history. Huh? As well as fixing the flow of time that Griffin has disrupted, we've also been able to add new flows to it. And though these have been different from the original flows, maybe they're meant to be the real world history. Ultimately, you could say that even Griffin himself is playing a necessary part in creating a new, complete history. Griffin? Necessary? You can't be serious! Women moment. Well, why not? Doctor, something terrible's happened. The rebel forces in the West are coming under attack from Griffin. What? Attacked? Get me Elena. Huh? Mm -hmm. Elena. Your name, mother. Just who is my mother? And why isn't she with us? Even my own father wouldn't answer my questions. Now I realize that father hoped I would find out those answers for myself.
Doctor, this is Elena. We're fighting Griffin's main army over here. If it carries on like this, Griffin will probably attack the Luna Lab too. Be careful. Mother? Is that... Is that Max? Yeah. Yes. You mean this boy is Elena's... That's right. Max is Elena's son. Max, I'm sorry. I'll bet your father never told you what happened to me. That's right. But why? Max, we live in different worlds. What? It's all right, Max. I'll explain everything. I'll tell you why I couldn't go on living with you. But to explain that, I need to explain what's going on in this world now. What do you mean by that? I'm from the future, just like Monica. Our time has changed greatly because of the devastation caused by Emperor Griffin. We couldn't let Griffin get away with it. So the people of our time formed a rebel force to fight against him. But Griffin began to use the power of the stone. Stone? One of the fabled Atlamilia stones that possess great powers. Powers that can move the earth and control time. Griffin harnessed that power to rewrite history bit by bit. He turned on people and erased their very existence from history. Atlamilia are strange jewels with a will of their own. They choose their owners themselves. Legend has it that Atlamilia will only choose for their owners people of good heart. We don't know how Griffin has managed to get his hands on one of the Atlamilia. But the fact is, he can use the power of that stone. And for us to be able to fight him, we needed one too. Three Atlamilia exist in the world. The first is the Sunstone, which Griffin possesses. The other two are the Moonstone, which emits a blue light, and the Earthstone, which emits a red light. Griffin tried to increase his powers by gaining possession of the remaining two Atlamilia. So we searched for the remaining two stones. First, we traced the owner of the Moonstone. That was Monica's father, King Raybrandt. At first, we thought we could inherit the Atlamilia from King Raybrandt to help us in our fight against Griffin. But the stone wouldn't accept any one among us as its owner. And so, in the end, we were unable to get the stone. We guarded King Raybrandt so that the stone would not fall into Griffin's hands. We decided to protect the person that the stone had chosen from the threat of Griffin. But Griffin was devious, and he assassinated King Raybrandt. Griffin didn't get his hands on the stone, though. The stone refused to become Griffin's, and instead chose King Raybrandt's daughter, Monica, as its new owner. That's how the second stone came to be Monica's. And so we looked for the last remaining Atlamilia, the Earth Stone. But we couldn't find it, because it didn't exist in our time. According to the prophecy of the great sage, Crest, the Earth Stone existed 115 years in the past. Its owner was a young boy called Gerald. We knew that Griffin would use his powers to travel through time and go back to Gerald's era looking for the stone. In order to protect the Red Atlamilia, I traveled to Gerald's time. And I made it my job to protect him. But during the time I was with Gerald, I fell in love with him. And then, Max, you were born. The first five years of your life went by in a flash. But then I had to return to my own time, because the war against Griffin was intensifying. I said goodbye to you and Gerald, and I returned to my time. I haven't been able to see you since. My mother is... 
From the future? Yeah. That's right. And we are <sighs> the ones that were chosen by these two Atlamilia. But I... I was just given this stone by my father. No, not exactly. Your father couldn't even touch it anymore. He must have realized the stone had chosen a new owner. Gerald couldn't touch it himself, but he saw you could play with it without effect. The Atlamilia chose you as its new owner, so Gerald let you have it. I think that the Atlamilia have reasons for who they choose as their owners. There's probably even a reason why Griffin was chosen. A reason he was chosen? That's right. Like what? That I don't know. But the stones are guiding people for the sake of something great. I can just feel it. I'm sorry. It looks like we haven't any more time to talk. Just wait a little longer. If we can recreate Pasnos, we'll have a chance to fight back. Recreate Pasnos? But how? Max and Monica will recreate its origin point, of course. The origin point of Pasnos is a workshop in Heimrata, a village at the foot of Mount Gondor. You'll have to head there. Mount Gondor is a dangerous place. I'm not sure if you... We'll be fine, Elena. Just leave it to us. Don't worry, Mother. I'll save you. Just stay here. Max. Okay. Take care, both of you. You bet! now and set out for your next goal. The volcano Mount Gundor. A huge factory, the Gundorado workshop, will be built there in the future. That's where the Rebellion Army's Ace in the Hole, Pasnos, will be built. Pasnos? It was the mobile stronghold of our rebel army. Griffin wiped Pasnos out, but if we could bring it back, I bet we can make a counterattack. Then let's go to Mount Gundor! Hey, Max! Monica! How's that bridge? We finished the repairs ages ago, guys! Then let's head for Mount Gundor. All right. Oh, no, hold on. Not so fast. There's some uh, scoops that we need to get. Not scoops, but ideas.
now we just need to go to the main lab.
the episode here. And thanks for tuning in. And I'll see y'all next time. And peace out. Actually, hold on. Real, real quick, like. It's actually, uh. That's another scoop we get. <coughs> Alrighty. A piece out for real.